You don't mind, I've already talked about it, but I'm going to talk about it again. Uh, sometimes I kind of feel, and this is factual. Matter of fact, I know it's factual because I've experienced it. Uh, black men in America, it doesn't matter whether you're old or young or straight or gay. And I'm talking about black men. I ain't talking about black women. I ain't talking about black girls rock. I ain't talking about no black older women, nothing like that. I'm talking about black men, boys, and men. And I'm talking about men of all ages. Okay? Our black men in this country have we always been set up for failure? You know, y'all don't even need to explain the answer, but I'll explain to you why I feel that I do based on the answer. This is DJ Wolf Live. All right, guys. Now, yes, the topic is have black men always been set up for failure in this country? And the easy answer is yes, absolutely. Is there a way to keep you from becoming a permanent failure? Yes. That's the other answer. The thing of it is, you have to fight tooth and nail from it, especially when you were very young. And, you know, generations, you know, coming up have always been told, well, you have to work twice as hard to get what the white man got and all that stuff. And, you know, that's part of the process right there. But then again, you got the same black people calling you all kind of goofy names and shit in your own communities. And if you're of a different complexion in the black community, that makes, you know, people, they, they, they ride you even harder, you know, on top of everything else. You already got that against you. Even though it's not nothing against you, but it's the fact that people want to use it against you. You know, they're already bad enough to use your own color against you, but then they, you got other people, like white people and other uh, races, who use it against you just because you're black. Just because you're of African descent. That's what makes me sick to my stomach every time I think about that. Excuse me, guys, gals. It does. It really do. You know, from the time, I mean, we were set from failure through slavery, through Jim Crow, through civil rights movement, civil war, all of that. But yet, we still came out swinging. We survived slavery. We survived the civil war. We survived Reconstruction and Jim Crow and the Civil Rights era. And sort of surviving the Me Too movement. That's another story. But And white supremacy, yeah, it's still an uphill battle. But we're, we're going to survive and we're going to still continue to, to press on. But the thing of it is for me, why I said yes to uh, our black man self for failure in this country. I like to, I should rephrase it, but I, I kind of stick with that because think about it. You're born into a world where people always think of you as a second class citizen, no matter what you do, no matter what you do in this country, no matter where you go to school at, no matter what part of the country you grew up in, no matter what neighborhood you come from. It don't matter how well you cross the T's and dot the I's. People in this country, and I do mean people, I mean everybody, evaluate you based on race. Us always race first and what you can do next second. Every time. Particularly African American men. Particularly us. You know, and it's always been that way. It's been that way for a long, long, long time, man. And I get really depressed about it at times. Somebody else was talking about, about something to do with that last night. About how black men in the workplace are always thrown under the bus. Constantly. 
know, I know from first-hand experience myself about that. You know, and we continue to, it continues to, to, to happen. You know, <clears throat> one thing I do know for certain when it comes to, 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 to sisters working in the workplace versus brothers working in the workplace, guess who they're going to look out for first? Every single time. Not the brothers. I'm telling you that for a fact, too. You know, yeah. <clears throat> in a heartbeat, they sure will. <clears throat> will not look, I mean, they, they sure will not look out for you. That's for sure. You, 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 in anything, in any case, you'll be overlooked. <clears throat> You know, and thrown under the bus whenever they feel like it. You know, but I do think <coughs> if you didn't have parents who threw you under the bus in the first place, you'd have a fighting chance. These parents now, more than ever, need to motivate these kids. Need to to be in the corner. Need to talk to him and guide him, man. You know, old school parents wasn't quite like that. You know, trust me, I know that. You know, if it didn't work for them, they hey, you know, they ain't gonna give you the same kind of pep talk necessarily. You know, and to be honest. It was a different set of rules, but they never, you know. I don't, I don't know. It's just when the way parents like mine talk to us back in the day it was totally different. How you're supposed to talk to your kids now? Let's put it like that. You know, I wasn't going around uh, throwing my son under the bus every chance I got. Now, don't get me wrong. I stayed on, you know, so old saying goes, "Spirit of ride, spoil the child." You know. So I stayed on when I needed to. But basically when I needed to. I didn't burden him about anything regarding the outside of, of staying on him about his schoolwork and his behavior. That's it. Anything beyond that, I never stressed him on. In my case, growing up, and like a lot of other old schoolers, particularly when the parents didn't get along, guess what you got stressed out about? Your stuff and everything to do with them. I didn't think that was fair. I, I, I st and I still talk about it every now and then. I don't think it's fair for any parent to stress their children out about something that has nothing to do with the child. You know. But that's what happened with me. You know. And I think it's what in a way made me a little bit uh, too cautious about things that I do because of that. But it also put me at a disadvantage because there were times and there's times even now where I don't actually uh, have assurance of what I'm, my capabilities are. I'm not going to go into detail about that, but yeah, it, it's true. I thought about that today. And when you do that kind of stuff and you uh, uh, push kids into to a corner where it's, they have a very low self-esteem of themselves, you're not helping the cause at all. If you think you're going to boast yourself as a parent while you putting that child down the whole fucking time, you are not helping that child's cause. Not one bit. You might think you are, but you're really not. You're fucking hurting them. I can say that with conviction because I've been there. And it hurts like hell. I was at a bowling alley with my dad uh, many years ago. When we talking about probably about 74, 75. I never forgot it. And, uh, it was in front of his friends, about three or four friends. And he felt embarrassed at me. Because, you, you know, I was very, I was a very skinny young kid. I mean, I'm still a kid, by the way, you know. And they have a lot of meat in my bones, you know. 
I look malnourished. If you saw the pictures of me as a child, you'd be shocked of how malnourished I look. But that's another whole story. I'm not. I even got. I even got that yet. So, and uh, maybe if I don't do it right now, I do it in another podcast. But <coughs> nevertheless, and he was actually, you know, kind of like, you know, throwing me on the bus a little bit, friends, friends. I never forgot that. It was the most hurtful thing, and I and I was like, wow. But you know, old school parents don't think much when it comes to kids, and you know, feelings and opinions and stuff. Because apparently, we didn't have any. You know, no real opinion, but no real feelings about, well, we're just kids. We don't understand. You know. Which is the reason why I ended up going to a <laughs> child psychiatrist at the time. Because it did hurt. I had, you know, I was depressed. I was very depressed. And extremely low self. And that's, I was diagnosed with, with a very low self-esteem, which I did have. You know. I know what some of y'all going to say. But you have over your fans. Yeah, I did. That's true. But your parents aren't helping when they actually are discouraging you and throwing you under the bus and putting you down and not trying to lift you up. Like parents, most parents are supposed to do any damn way. A lot of y'all, they don't do it. Y'all ride with the same old salt, salt shoe shits and slavery when it comes to raising kids. And some of y'all Negroes want to take credit for uh, making kids, but not nurturing kids. Because y'all don't do it any damn way. Now, you know, some of many of y'all don't even spend the time with them like y'all supposed to. Why y'all don't? That's a fact. You know? You're supposed to build up your children, not tear them down. <clears throat> That's the bottom line. You really are. I think it's almost criminal if you don't. You know, you had them, build them up. You're supposed to be uh, the parent or the parents that builds to put the building blocks into your children so they can build themselves up to become not only upright citizens and adults, but, but adults that can actually uh, deal with the normal stress and stuff that everybody else do every day. You know, that can, you know, sustain themselves when they move out the house at some point or when they sustain, sustain themselves after they get out of high school, you know, in general. We got a lot of parents who aren't like that. You know, you got a lot of parents, they are just as bad as the old school parents because they don't take the time to really nurture their kids and build them. They put, you know, they, it, matter of fact, I think kids now are more stressed than ever. You know, I used to think I was, but man, these kids now, they're stressed out on all kind of stuff. Not just peer pressure, but gun violence. <coughs> Drugs. You name it. You know, they really are. They really are. It's not fair. It's not. You know, I had parent. One of my parents told me I don't remember with my mother, my father, and uh, I remember telling him, I said, "You, know, I got a problem. You know what said, You ain't got no problem. You know why? I'm a kid. I don't have problems. I'm just living vicariously in life around y'all." No. Because the mentality was kids were meant to be seen and not heard. Or heard and seen but not taken seriously. You know, this is probably one of the main reasons why I think that our communities 
is full of so many broken homes today. Because a lot of these old school parents, or many of these old school parents, didn't take the time to build the children. <clears throat> they were too busy wrapped up in their own politics and stuff, uh, of their own personal stuff to even even care. That's real talk. It's really sad. It's sad to me uh, about the way our communities are even today. It's, it's more the same song and dance. You know, the, the, the many parents get their children today. That's a fact. I know what y'all going to say. Not all. I know what y'all going to say. Not all. I don't want to hear about that. Not all bullshit. Come on, man. You take it all damn day. Then not all stuff got to go. Real talk. Not all. You know how many times I've heard that BS? Not all. Not all. You know, whatever. Whatever. You know. <clears throat> you want your kids to be right and do right? You got to be right and do right with them. Come on, man. You take the damn money. You're playing these games on the road. Now you got time for it. You know, and it's the same thing today. <clears throat> Some of us, as adults, still go through that trauma today. Dealing with the same parents now that they dealt with 5, 10, 15, 20, 40, and 50 years ago that they could relate to that they can't relate to now. Trust me, I know. That's a shame. You can't have the <clears throat> you can't have the kind of talk with them that you that you want to or should be able to with honest conversations because they don't want to deal with the reality of it. You know? The same things they wouldn't have didn't want to deal with, address or some of the same things or some of the things they didn't want to address with you then they don't want to address with you now because as an adult you know the ways of the world you've learned all this you've experienced things and you've picked up things and you start talking about them as an adult and they think you're still supposed to be in your place you know you're an adult now not a child We still have uh, many folks in our community that are extremely sensitive to anything you say to them. Good, bad, or indifferent. Or even honest conversation. They can't handle it. No, they in that not all routine. Or, you know, why are you asking all these questions? <coughs> Or just in complete denial about anything. You know. That's where you don't have the honest conversations at. Because people just want to deny everything. From the get. From the grip. From the get go. You know. It's ridiculous. Man. I'm going to let that space right there. People can't. I can't do nothing about that. I'm as far back as I can go. That that gonna stupid driving the truck right on my ass. I can't move back. <sighs> Alright guys, I'm gonna cut it short. <clears throat> this traffic is freaking man hellacious out here today. This is DJ Wolf. I'm out. Mm -hmm.